But uh, this is from Bitcoin News. This says even wow, even CNBC is talking about a Bitcoin strategic reserve for the U.S. So let's see what the dipshits on CNBC have to say about Bitcoin. And so, yeah, he's going to speak very positively about Bitcoin here at the conference. Do you think that these favorable comments could go so far as to indicate that he'd be open uh, to it being a reserve currency for the U.S.? Yeah, so there were some rumblings of that on X this week. It could be something that's very difficult to get done, but it is possible. The Justice Department holds about 200,000 units of Bitcoin. So the United States is the largest holder of Bitcoin. And so... They could easily just move that over to the Department of Treasury and start right there and have 13 billion worth of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So it is a possible move. It just could be tough to get done. But what happens is, is the Justice Department in holding these units of Bitcoin, they've been a random seller in the space. And so if they move from being a random seller at times, which could push the price of Bitcoin down over to being a long term hodler, well, that could be really good for the space and push prices up. And so, yeah, he's going to speak very Dude's right. CNBC, whoever that guy is, he is correct. We can confirm. But a couple things to note there that I would say is, yes, it's positive. So they got two. He's talking about 200,000 Bitcoin that the Department of Justice has, the DOJ. They would be seized Bitcoin, which is kind of wild. It's kind of wild that they're seizing Bitcoin from people. I mean, it was acquired illegally, they say, but that's kind of subjective. But uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But anyways, there's a couple of interesting things here. So yes, they would have the 200,000 Bitcoin. Believe it or not, I think that would actually still be less than Michael Saylor has himself through MicroStrategy. So did you see MicroStrategy yesterday, by the way? Whew. Haven't checked today, but it was buzzing yesterday. But the second part there is that, yeah, they'll have that. That's a pretty good start. But there's two other things to factor in here. Number one is that if Trump actually ends up winning the presidency he's already been talking to riot and clean spark about the mining facilities and what kind of how the government could not subsidize i don't think but push it forward at the end of this at the end of this whole thing what's going to happen is that the energy providers because they're you look at bitcoin mining and that's a pretty difficult industry but the the energy providers in each state each country they got a pretty difficult job too because they have to produce the energy and then they have to find a buyer for that energy. Right. So that's something I think that most people, when they flick on the lights in the morning, they don't really understand the whole, the, what happens with the energy there. I, I did not before I discovered Bitcoin. And that's kind of one of the things that has kept me around here for sure is the energy aspect of it, because I, I kind of understand it now and where things are going to move to, but that's the hardest part of the, the ener energy industry is not producing the energy. We have tons of resources for it, but you still have to find the infrastructure. You still have to find the investments, but then you have to figure out how much energy is going to be used by your surrounding area. And then you have to figure out how to sell the rest of that to somebody else. And energy only travels so far. We use the power lines. So energy only travels so far. You can only sell your electricity so far. But with, with Bitcoin mining, every, that changes everything because you no longer need to find a buyer of that energy. You can just convert that directly into Bitcoin, which is insane. I was going to use the F word there, but I'm trying to cut back. It's insane. And once you understand that, I know I've, I've said it a few times on here, but I, I still think that within Bitcoin and with, all, with how different things are, that you have to hear it a couple of times. So with energy... You no longer have to sell it to somebody because that's how it, it currently works. You you produce all this energy. You Whoever's within your radius uses that energy. Whatever you have left over, you try to sell that energy. And you don't really know exactly how it's going to look. You're going off historical data and trying to figure out a forecast of it. And so you have to sell that energy to somebody else. You send it to them. They give you money. And that's how you fund your operations. But that it's very hard to balance that whole thing. With Bitcoin mining, though, you hook up a Bitcoin miner to a natural resource that's producing energy and you don't have to find a buyer for it. Bitcoin is the buyer. 
So you can convert your natural resources directly into not only money, but the hardest money that's ever been available. And especially if the U.S. is putting on their balance sheet and focused on Bitcoin mining there. So it's a real mind fuck. Sorry. It's a real change to what we have now. But that's what Bitcoin is. It literally flips everything in this old system on its head, including the energy there. So if you look at like the, I forget what the Kardashev scale is, but the first level on there, which we're not even at yet, is when you can actually use the natural resources, the unlocked energy of your planet in a, in a perfect way. So we haven't been able to do that yet because there's so much that, that basically means that every, um, well, how, how am I going to say this? Every natural resource on earth should be utilized fully. We're nowhere near that right now. Think about the waterfalls up in even Northern Manitoba here. We have some hydro dams that are hooked up, but maybe 50% of them or less, like that's just a, a guess. But think about how much natural resources are out in the earth right now and on this planet that are unused, un, uh, not utilized because we don't have the ability to buy and sell that energy and transport that energy far enough. So when you hook up Bitcoin mining to this whole equation, you actually can you utilize, you can take advantage of every single natural resource on your planet. We're not, it's not going to happen in two years, obviously, but Bitcoin mining gives that ability to unlock abundance in the world and that planet. And you're at, when you're actually using the energy that the, that the earth provides, that's the unlock there. 